So we start out with calculations of pHs in strong acid or strong base solutions, literally because the calculations are much simpler. So to identify a strong acid, in the beginning you pretty much have to memorize them and be able to identify them. So here I've given you a list of common strong acids. These are the ones that we will be using for this discussion. But you should either t check your textbook or ask your instructor to get a list of the strong acids that they expect you to know. So it's important to be able to do, identify a strong acid or a weak acid because the calculations um, are much different. So if you can't identify which one you're using, your answer is going to be way off. For strong bases, it's pretty easy to identify a strong base because hydroxide is generally involved. So for this discussion, our definition of a strong base will be a group 1 or group 2 metal attached to a hydroxide. So group 1 and group 2 metals are the two columns all the way to the left on the periodic table. So you get things like sodium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide. So the calculations of strong acids and strong bases are much easier because the K values for the equilibriums are so large that we can assume 100% dissociation or we can assume that the equilibrium is all the way to the right. But we still need to understand that Kw applies. So even though um, we have a strong acid or a strong base, we're dissolving them in water, so Kw is still in effect. And really what that means is that the concentration of hydroxide and the concentration of hydronium are tied together by Kw. So here I give you a typical question. I give you the concentration of a strong acid, and I say, what's the concentration of hydroxide in that uh, original solution. So HCl is actually a strong acid, which means we get 100% disassociation. That means that there is no HCl left in solution, that it has all been um, converted to H3O plus and Cl minus. The equilibrium for this um, reaction is shifted all the way to the right. So really we're saying for every one mole of HCl we put in, we get one mole of hydronium out. So I've given you the concentration of HCl, but remember what we want is the concentration of hydronium. So we need to do the formal conversion between the concentration of HCl and the concentration of hydronium. Um, and we get that from this original reaction, that there's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. For every one mole of HCl we put in, we get one mole of hydronium out. So this may seem sort of unnecessary, but sometimes some acids have more than one acidic proton, so this may be a two-to-one mole ratio. So we need to um, do this step and be thorough. So with this, our concentration of hydronium is the same as our concentration of um, hydrochloric acid, which is 0 0.10. But remember, we don't want our concentration of hydronium. What the original question asked for was the concentration of hydroxide. And how we're going to get to that is we realize that Kw is in effect, that concentration of hydroxide and hydronium are tied together by Kw. So if we take our Kw expression and solve it for the concentration of hydroxide, we get that that is going to be equal to Kw divided by the concentration of hydronium. So we plug those two values in here. So we got our concentration of hydronium um, from this conversion. Kw is a constant. We get our concentration of hydroxide being 1.0 times 10 to the minus 13th. So another variation of this is if you're starting with a solid and you're dissolving in a solution, you want to come up with the pH. So here I'm saying that you take a 1.5 grams of sodium hydroxide and you dissolve it in a, enough water to bring the solution to 100 milliliters, I then want to know what the pH is. So this is uh, something that we do quite commonly. And this is a variation of some of the calculations you can do. So this goes back to the ideas we need to be able to convert grams to moles. So I'm not actually going to do that calculation here. Um, we understand that 1.5 grams divided by the molecular weight of sodium hydroxide gives you moles of sodium hydroxide, and in that case it is 0 0.0375. So moles are important, but really what we want is the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So we take the moles and divide by 
the volume of the solution in liters. So 100 milliliters is 0.1 liters. We get our concentration of sodium hydroxide to be 0.375. So just like what we did with the acid, we need to take a second and realize that we don't really want the concentration of sodium hydroxide. What we want is the concentration of hydroxide. And so we gotta realize, in this case, it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. For every one mole of sodium hydroxide you put in, you get one mole of hydroxide out. And we need to do this step because, once again, some strong bases might be able to produce two hydroxides. So this, in this case, it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, so our concentration of sodium hydroxide is equal to the concentration of hydroxide, which is 0.375.